Overwhelmingly, when the Bible speaks of God, the Bible speaks of the Father. Especially in the New Testament, without qualification, if it just speaks of God, nine times out of ten, it's a reference to the Father. So, that said, this coming Lord's Day is Mother's Day, Lord's Day. Mother's Day is coming up. So, Today and tomorrow, we will be looking at passages where God describes his heart as the heart of a mother. Heart of a mother. Yes, there are some passages in the Bible. Though overwhelmingly, the Bible speaks of God as Father, there are passages that speak of God's heart as a mothering heart. A mothering heart. Today, Isaiah chapter 49 15 and 16, verses 15 and 16, one of my favorite passages, one of my life passages I love to share. Isaiah 49, 15 through 16. Let's walk through this together. Can a woman forget her nursing child? Think of the preposterous question being asked here. Can a woman forget her nursing child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? This child that is being spoken of is a nursing child, not a bratty teenager. <laughs> Sorry, teenagers. Not a, not a well-behaved teenager either, for that matter. A nursing child, a child that is completely dependent on his mother. Can a mother forget that child who is nursing at her breasts? No. You would think no. No. Impossible. But... Look at what God says. Even if these would forget, I will not forget you. Even if it were conceivable that a mother would forget her son, I will not forget you. Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. God is speaking to his people and he's saying, I have not forgotten you. Your walls, your city, your visage is before me all the time. That's what he is saying here. God's people say to him, but God has forgotten us. He has forsaken us. God says, there's no way that I could possibly forget or forsake you. Even if a mother could, as inconceivable as it is, a mother could forget her son, I would not forget you. And as proof, know that I'm looking at you all the time and look at my hands. Your name is engraved in my hands. Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. It is not, I have written you on the palms of my hands. No, I have engraved you We're talking not not just a pencil mark or even a pen mark, but a deep tattoo that cannot be erased. I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. What does that remind you of? I don't think it's a stretch to see this prophetically as pointing to the hands of Jesus. Jesus, I can't sense your presence. Jesus, I'm so lost in this storm right now. Jesus, where are you? He stretches out his hands. He opens his hands. And what are on his hands? Prints from rusty Roman nails. From when his hands were nailed to the cross for you and me. Yeah, let's set it biblically. When Jesus rose again, he still had the scars on his hands. Forever he will have the scars on his hands. Forever they will proclaim his love for us to the glory of God. There will be a celebration. Your names are written, loved ones, on the nail marks, forever engraved in his hands. In the song that we're about to sing, my name is engraved in his hands. 
Those words are right there. And when you sing those words, I pray that you would sing them with renewed meaning. (laughs) Because your name was engraved there using that rusty Roman nail. Forever to proclaim his love. Let's celebrate him together. Let's sing. joy, what a blessing to know that my name is graven on your hand. Guarantees that by grace I can stand in your presence. In spite of all of the bad parenting, the mistakes and the sins that we as parents have committed, when we've acted out of not motherly or fatherly care, but out of selfishness, Oh God, thank you for your mercy. Thank you that our names are not just written, but graven in your hand. Before the throne of God, we meet together with all those you have given to us, especially our children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.